All right, y'all, it's Goodwill Bins Day here in Columbus, Ohio. What's happening, everybody? It is Brendan. The channel is Dad Planet, and you are watching the One Man Show. So yes, like I always do, I'm taking you up to the Goodwill outlet. We're gonna shop until we drop. I'm plenty good on the bread and butter items here. I'm looking for a little bit more higher end items this trip. But again, when you go to the bins, you have to kind of take what the bins gives you. So you'll probably see some bread and butter. I did find a pair of luxury shoes and I also found a single luxury shoe where the one is equal to the other, but I'm gonna show you why that is and how I'm going to be pricing both of them. So you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for that. We've got clothing, we've got hats, we've got shoes, we've got everything else in between. Let's go shopping. Let's just jump right into it and get our hands dirty, shall we? So I just found a single Hoka Clifton 5. Throw that in the cart. There's a young gentleman here that actually finds the second one for me. We do a lot of sharing here in the Columbus location. Listen, money may or may not buy happiness, but it sure does make everyone's life a little bit easier, right? So let's try to spread the love where we can. So here he is finding this uh, Hoka Clifton 5. They were a men's size eight and a half, probably put 30 bucks on those. And then I grabbed a pair of Nike slides, $15 to $20 on the slides. I, I'm selling a lot more flip-flop slides, sandals this year than I have in the past. So I'm not really sure how they'll do in the fall and the winter, but I'm picking them up because they're super, super light. And we're just discussing the fact that there are only two shoe bins and there's usually three, so I don't know what's going on in this uh, location, but they haven't really been pushing out three shoe bins lately. It's just been two, although towards the end of the video, finally, I think they do bring three full ones out. I also grabbed a pair of Crocs. Those were uh, Malines, the style, M-E-L-E-E-N, 20 to $25 for those. So right off the bat, walking in, one of the first people in, I've got three pairs of shoes from last night's leftovers that I really like, so. We're doing pretty good there. I'm gonna move over to clothing. They brought out a brand new rack, if you will, of three bins. We're gonna dig through this, but I um, I really appreciate kind of how this location is run. I've seen a lot of bins videos where it just is out of control and crazy. So I'm fortunate and we got a really good group, and I've said this before to people that have been following me. We got a great group of customers and a, uh, a good staff there, so it kind of works out nice. Nothing in that first rotation, so they brought another rotation out, and you just saw me grab an LL Bean chore jacket. It was a women's large uh, petite. $50 for those. This is go time to pick those up, and LL Bean as a brand is such a strong bread and butter brand. And that was a $50 coat right there, beige color. You will see some of those that have a corduroy collar. The one that I just picked up had a leather collar. So I don't know if that enhances the value or increases the value, but such a nice coat, a good fit, and timing is everything for those types of jackets. So that was a great find. And uh, we're kind of cooking with gas here, so move into the next bin this is definitely not for everybody i always encourage people if you if you have bins go go to them it's it's a it's an interesting haul there that shirt that i just picked up that was an ll bean henley the style on it is river driver now on ll beans website those shirts sell brand new for 65 dollars. and i'm going to tell you if someone's willing to pay 65 for a brand new they're going to pay 30 bucks for it pre-owned so that's what i'm going to list that one for now I moved over to the like bags and hat section. I have never seen this many hats in this location in three bins in my entire life. So I can't imagine because this is like the next day's goods. This isn't a brand new rotation. What was in them before uh, we got there the following morning. So I'm gonna try to tear through as many of these as possible. I like this Jurassic Park 3 hat right here. There was a sold comp in the 20 to $25 range, so I'm gonna grab that. I have a John Deere hat in my hand. It was like an owner's edition hat. I thought, oh yeah, this thing's probably worth $30, $40. I was wrong. I put that back. It has no value. I am gonna take the Purpose World Tour hat though. This is Justin Bieber from 2016. There aren't that many sold comps on it, so it's probably, for me, gonna land in the 25 
to $30 range, but there aren't that many of them online and some in like the 60 to $70 range. So with only one sold comp that said it was brand new for 50 bucks, I think I'm gonna have to be aggressive at 30. Here's another hat that uh, after further research does not have any value, that Exxon Signature 2 hat. I always get a kick out of myself. I'm like, oh my gosh, I just found a $100 banger. Not the case, put that one back, but Appalachian State, this is um, a school that just got done beating a top 10 uh, Division I college football program in football. They did that in 2007 by beating the Michigan Wolverines. So I think interest in Appalachian State is up and that was a vintage the game hat. So I'm gonna pick that up and uh, we're gonna represent uh, App State here at 20 to $30. Shout out to you guys if uh, there's any alum in the house, but um, that was a great hat. I picked up that Tweety denim hat, but after doing research, that one didn't have any value in it or it didn't have enough value for me to consider taking it home, even as light as it was. I'm still trying to be a little bit more picky when I go to the bins because I've got plenty of bread and butter, but I enjoy going. Is you just never know what you're gonna have or what you're gonna find when you're here. So this is a Good Morning America hat. I'm gonna take that. There is a sold comp that was in, I think the $20 range. So I'll pick that hat up. It was from 2000. I think it said Times Square on it. I have to rewind if uh, you want me to be exact but there were so many hats and like literally no bags. So I'm just gonna check, double check, triple check. I'll take that Titleist visor, easy $15 right there. It's Call of Duty World War II hat. There's a new Call of Duty game that I think is just came out or is, or is going to be coming out soon. And so I didn't do my research and forgot that that hat was in my cart. So I brought that home, but that is probably not even gonna be listed. It's not even worth $10. Um, same with the shock top hat, although I did look that one up, but I put it back because it had no value. So another school that I like here, Coastal Carolina. This is a Zephyr hat, great condition, and they've shown Coastal Carolina that uh, they'll pay 50, 60, even $70 for a hat similar to that brand new. So again, I'll price mine be between 25 and $30 pre-owned, and uh, I'm sure it's just a matter of time before we sell. Now, Cleveland Browns, the, the Cleveland Browns marketing team just ran a like a questionnaire for fans on what they wanted fans to see as a logo or design in the middle of the field. And the Brownie Elf was the winner. So I'm piggybacking off of the Browns marketing department right there. And I'm gonna pick that Brownie Elf Browns hat up because I think it will sell. I mean, that's just basically the entire fan base or, or at least the ones that voted saying that we love this mascot so i picked that hat up i'll probably end up getting twenty dollars for it that huff hat was pretty cool looking i may have gotten something out of that too but when i looked at comparables for that brand i just wasn't satisfied with that one so i left that one behind but uh but the the brownie hat should sell and uh hopefully it sells quickly this is a Youth Columbia hat. Style on this one is Silver Ridge. It's like a little patrol hat. I don't usually pick up youth hats and I think I just missed the fact that it was youth because I saw a large, extra large and just threw it in my cart. So I'm gonna price that aggressively at $10. There really aren't that many great comps on that hat. I think because it's youth. So if you have success selling youth hats, let me know in the comments. I don't sell youth hats. I don't sell a ton of youth shoes. I try to stay away from all that stuff. This is a Mack truck hat. Trucker hat has a pretty cool like 3D embroidered, whatever you want to call that, uh, patch on the front. So that was pretty cool. Mack truck hats do sell. I'll probably price that aggressively at $15, hopefully to move it quickly. So young lady here that sources a lot of Vera Bradley. And so anytime I see her, uh, I try to give her pieces that uh, I just end up finding. So I gave that wallet to her and moved back into the area here that's another the game hat I believe and I love these Tilly hats right here this is the Wanderer it's a t3 unfortunately it doesn't have the cord that like tie cord the lace 
And so, you know, a $50 pre-owned hat has to be turned into $20. It was navy blue. So I'll price that aggressively. And I always pick up polo Ralph Lauren hats. This is, I think, beige. It's got a little bit of wear to it, but not enough to, like, deter somebody from making the purchase. So I love picking up these strapback hats. I'm going to say that that is probably going to be, you know, a $15 sale right there. But... The sell-through rate on those hats is very, very good. This is another youth hat right here. Some little kid out there wants to be Joe Burrow, right? Uh, and that hat was brand new with tags, 47 brand, Cincinnati Bengals. So I'm going to take it. And uh, like I said, maybe $15 on that. We'll hope to move it quick. But uh, shout out to all my Bengals fans that watch. And we're moving on to clothing. This was a brand new rotation, I believe. So we got everybody kind of digging in to see if there's anything good. And I wasn't really impressed with all of the things that were coming out here. But because I did so well with the hats and I do pretty well with the shoes again, as you'll see towards the end of this video, I can't really complain, but not much in the way of like ma not major luxury because it's you know few and far between you'll find something like you know a hundred dollars or more i do find items that are worth that um, sometimes you have to just get creative with your pricing um there's a market for this type of shirt here i'm not going to go into details with it obviously but i think i can get 20 to 25 dollars for that shirt bonita beach good vacation resort area you know, has a little bit of humor to it, so I'm gonna pick that up. I have a red Nike hoodie over my shoulder right now, but I don't take that home. And I also have a fake pair of diesel jeans over my shoulder that I had to leave behind. So nothing doing there. And then that t-shirt that I grabbed, that was a Marmot t-shirt, $10 for that, possibly. It was a size XL, but the sell-through rate's pretty good on that brand for t-shirts, so I'll go ahead and bring that one home and uh, we're just gonna keep on keeping on. So let's move over to the shoes. This is a brand new rotation just coming out. I grab a pair of Nike slides, they're off-court slides. I'll probably, based on the condition, and you'll get to see all of these towards the end. I have everything washed and cleaned and ready to go, but 15 to $20 on the Nike Ohio State slides. I've got a pair of Brooks here that I thought I could easily clean up but when I looked at them a little bit closer towards the toe they had some like tears in the mesh so I left those behind after I checked them but again I it's just it takes out sometimes it takes a lot of digging and getting to the bottom especially when a new rotation comes out as you'll see uh, why here in a second got a pair of nice Crocs there those are Shana's uh, they cleaned up very nicely, 20 to $25 for those. And I found a pair of Ohio State Nike Crocs, but they were too beat up for me to bring home. So I thought maybe I could get them cleaned and, and looking nice. But once I took a little bit of a closer look at them in the light, just wasn't going to happen. Way too much wear on the bottoms. And I didn't think that I could get the tops into a condition that was uh, favorable for resale. So pair of Jordans there those were youth they weren't in that great of condition so left those behind and then a pair of youth Crocs that could have been okay but again I try to stay away from youth where I can because I just do not have good success with them so cool looking pair of North Face boots right here these are prodigy boots they're a men's size eight and a half and I'm gonna have to dig to find the other one. They have a little bit of wear on the exterior, but the soles were excellent. I mean, they, they were in near mint conditions. So for that reason, I'm gonna bring those home. I think I can get in between 40 and $50 for them. They're a little bit smaller of a size for men's, but as you'll see towards the end of the video, once we get everything on my back porch, they really look nice. But um, it took a little bit of time to find the second one. In fact, I think I had my hand on it if you were watching close enough earlier uh, in this rotation, but scored a pair of Tory Burch here. These are Tory Burch Melinda's. I'm going to show you how I'm going to price them. I, I'm a little disappointed um, based on the color, but we're going to take a look at Terra Peak here in just a second to see how I'm going to price those Melinda flats because they look great, but they do have a little bit of wear and the numbers were a little bit deceiving to me. So 
there's that second pair of or the second shoe, the second boot for North Face. So those were great, but we're gonna go home. I'm gonna show you everything that I purchased. There were a couple of things that I bought that I didn't record, including a single shoe that uh, was pretty impressive, but we're gonna total everything up. I'll show you exactly what I spent and exactly what we stand to make. Okay, here are all of the hats. I think the ones that you did not see on film this is just a Nike Legacy 91 hat. I sell a bunch of these in between $15 and $20. So that's one you didn't see. And I think the only other one that wasn't in the video is this hat here, and it's sort of interesting. So Disney Adventures All-Stars. Show your character, and on the back, it's from The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Now, I don't remember this show. I think it was from like the 2004 um, time frame, but it is like authentic Disney. I mean, this I there's nothing like it online. This hat could be listed anywhere from $20 up to $50. I'm not really sure exactly where I want to price it, but I thought it was cool, it was unique. Again, nothing like it on the uh, on eBay at least that I could see, so, um, so I decided to pick it up. So there's all the hats. Let's take a look at the clothing next. The only two pieces that I didn't get on camera for clothing are this Affliction, it's like, rhinestone studded women's shirt size small very pretty these shirts sell pretty regularly in the $20 range for me and so that's where I'll list that at $20 and then this last one here the brand is um, smoke rise this shirt right here with the skulls on the front sells pretty consistently for $20 I don't know that smoke rise is a bolo brand uh, but this style shirt for them looks like it sells pretty well we got Halloween coming up. We got some skull themes here, so maybe that will sell uh, quickly for me. Twenty dollars for that, and then you guys saw the rest of it. Let's take a look at the shoes last. Okay, all of the shoes have been washed and cleaned, so you saw all of these here, uh, the Hoka's. You saw the North Face. You didn't see me catch these Air Monarchs. I picked these up towards the end. These are um, these have already been through the wash, although I need to wipe them down. I need to wipe the midsoles down a little bit more. Those are $35. I think those are a size 10 and a half. And then I picked up this uh, Disney Pixar Onward Lounge Fly Lanyard. $10 for that. That's nothing. Now, let's take a look at the condition of the Tory Burch Melinda's. So we've got a little bit of wear on the front. And then I, there's a little bit of a stain. I'll, maybe I'll try to get this out. Uh, I'm not sure about that. A little bit of wear. And then here's what the soles look like. A better picture of the soles price wise we're going to go to my computer and i'm going to show you how i'm going to price these based on what i see um, but before we do that i did source a single pair of rothy's now these are oh, this this one single shoe is 100 percent authentic it's called the driver and the color is raspberry now i picked this up because this is a luxury brand and I'm pretty certain that I can sell just the single shoe. So we're going to compare this and look online to how I end up pricing these Tory Burch. Let's take a look at that now. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Terra Peak here and I'm looking for Tory Burch Melinda's, but I just want them in red. And when I scroll down, I don't really love the results here. Here's a pair of flats and not all of these are going to be exact, but there's two pairs of flats here. And these are solds that have sold within the last 365 days. So it's a full calendar year. Um, a size eight and a half down here and a size eight, 35 for pre-owned and then 47 for pre-owned. I don't really love that price, but if you go to the next tab and uh, I'm going to search Tory Birch Melinda flats, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sort by the color. The, and again, I'm sorting by used. The average price for these is $72. So I don't know what the issue is with the red color, but based on the condition of the ones that I sourced, and the fact that it doesn't appear as though red is that popular, and maybe that's because they just don't come up that often. Um, I'm thinking $40 is probably the correct price for these red Melinda's that I just sourced. But yeah, the average sales price for the colors outside of red are much higher. As far as that single Rothy's goes, it actually sat there for an entire day. I was having a conversation, shout out to UD, when she saw that I had it. Um, somebody had been looking for it a day before, couldn't find the pair and left it there. I'm going to grab it. And this is the reason why I'm going to grab it. 
Here is Rothy's website. This is the driver and the color is raspberry. You can see brand new. These are $185 and you can sell single shoes all the time. I don't suggest sourcing single shoes for just every, your average everyday basic pair of shoes, but this is a luxury brand and somebody that's in a cast or is just going on one foot, one leg for whatever reason, um, they might still really want to purchase these. And I have plenty of success selling luxury brand shoes, single pairs all the time. So for that reason, I'm going to list just that single shoe and I'm gonna list it for $40. So 40 bucks for the Tory Burch flats and $40 for the single Rothy shoe. So I spent a total of $31.46 and my total listed value for everything comes to $650. So it was yet another successful trip to the Goodwill outlet. Brendan here, Dad Planet, the one man show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hit that like button if you liked what you saw or you learned something today and then always consider becoming a member of the Dad Planet family by subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon so that you know every single time I upload a video to YouTube, we are on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Very exciting. Thanks again. We'll see you in the next video.